okay so in maven what happens that uh, jdk library that we have to everything should be there first of all to in fact to run your maven project also we need jdk we need java development kit available it should be available on your machine but there are some external libraries also there that uh, we have uh, uh, some libraries like first library we have selenium the driver library which is available in the form of java so latest library let's see 2.13 is already there and uh, let's see this is the library name right some other library let's see we have exchange library we have some other library let's see apache poi apis we have some other libraries like let's see we are using cucumber libraries we have let's see log4j is also there some other libraries let's see maybe some other xyz library you are using some any xyz uh, libraries you are using and these libraries obviously you are working on java so everything will be available in testng.jar apache poi api all the jar files will be there cucumber jar files will be there log4j.jar file xyz.jar files so everything selenium also provides all the jar files so everything will be there in the form of jar files right and each and every library is having its own version right maybe selenium is having 2.13 test ng is having something let's see 3.09 or some point zero nine or something like that i'm just randomly giving some number right same thing for poi cucumber log 4j and for xyz also let's see from some like 1.x version is available or something like this each and every library is having its own version so what exactly we do, we define all these libraries in our Maven project and all these libraries will be stored somewhere in your pom.xml file. So this is your pom.xml file. So pom.xml file is the heart of the program, heart of the project in which all the libraries we have defined. Let's see, pom, this is a full pom.xml file and this section is called dependency section. Right, that we have already seen that. Now, what is the purpose of these dependencies? Why we are using this thing? We can download jar files and we can use that also in a normal Java project. Why we are using Maven? So, Maven, why we are using because it's having a couple of advantages. The first advantage is that dependency management tool. Automatically, it will take care of your dependencies. That's it. You just need to give the latest version, automatically, it will uh, download the things from internet because these libraries are available on the maven server in the industry in the market it's already available in the, that is called centralized maven repository okay maven repository and that is centralized which is freely available in the market by everyone and there are a lot of libraries are available in this particular repository we have testng we have junit selenium cucumber poi api log4j xyz sikuli auto it blah blah there are so many libraries are available html unit driver ghost driver phantom js there are so many things are available over here okay for java development point of view also they are using so many libraries they are using hibernate they are using a spring framework or n number of things they are using everything is available on these maven repository having some version name this is let's see this is version number one okay this is version number one this is number two three four one two one point two one one point three one something like this each and every it's having its own version right and let's say this is selenium and selenium is having around uh, 2.13 version is available and all the previous version also available guys on maven repository it's a huge repository so selenium is started let's see from 0 0.1 till 2.13 all the different versions are available on this particular maven repository centralized repository in the market right so what exactly you just pass the version name let's see you want 1.53 it will pay 1.53 from here so all the repositories are available okay according to their version so they are maintaining the versioning also in maven repository over here 
then we are not bothered about it. Who is taking care of all those things? So that's a separate mineral depository taken care by maybe some organization or maybe some centralized repository is created. Like that. Tomorrow, in fact, you are the, let's see, Naveen sitting over here in India, Bangalore. And this guy created some cool uh, APIs or cool framework or something like this. I just create, I, okay, convert into multi, I convert into multiple jar file or single jar file and uh, I'll register my, uh, you know, register my tool or API over here. So let's see, this is my API having multiple jar files over it. This is my API. So who did that? Naveen did that. Right, this guy did that. Similarly, there are a number of contributors are available in the market. They are releasing their uh, rest assured API or rest HTTP client or blah blah blah. So many things are there nowadays. Okay, but this Maven repository is only and only for Java. Let's see. So they have given everything over here. So you want let's see XLS reader. I convert that into jar file and I'll I can put it over here with some name or version number. So you just need to add uh, Naveen's XLS jar file over here, okay, in the power dependency, which will be picked from here, from this particular Maven repository, right? So this is the second advantage that you can create your own repository. Tomorrow, let's see, uh, Kalyani is creating some different uh, repository or some fun do, uh, tool you are creating and you want that, okay, a community and uh, and all the automation engineer they want they should use that it's freely available open source so all the open source jar files are available over here this is what i try to say and just then she will circulate uh, into social media that okay see this is this is the cool stuff i have created please use it something like this if any bug fixes are there you will be releasing next version 1.0 2.0 3.0 4.0 and you will keep adding new features and you will keep adding uh, enhancing the framework and enhancing the bugs and I mean fixing the bugs and everything and then you will keep uh, giving the new versions uh, to the community in the form of a Maven repository. So that's why we always see is there are so many versions are available. Why Selenium 2.13 is available? Maybe they have fixed a couple of issues or maybe they have given some new features. Right? So in just a minute guys I'm getting a point tested. Yeah, sorry guys <clears throat> so this is the advantage okay I can create my own and all these repository I can access in my project and this is my project somewhere I'm sitting here in Bangalore in my Eclipse I can use that but make sure that okay you are connected over the internet otherwise you won't be able to do that make sure that okay because this is a centralized repository if you are making the connection okay with these guys right make sure that okay you are having internet with you so i'll add all the dependencies over here i'll get all the jar files in my project in maven internally it will create one folder that folder is called dot m2 folder dot m2 folder internally it will be available over here in this particular folder guys all the dependencies jar files will be stored all the jar files will be stored over here the Selenium, Poi API, Cucumber, whatever the dependencies you have given in your project, all the files will be stored over here. And the moment you create the project, what, whenever it is, I mean, whatever the required jar files are available, it will pick from this .m2 folder and then uh, it will be used in your project. Right? So, this is the second thing. Third thing is that Maven lifecycle. Now, what we do that uh, Maven, it's having its own life cycle. First, it will initialize. So three, four steps are there. First, it will initialize. This is called initialization. Second thing is called it is compiling. It will compile, right? And then scope and then run it and then end. So this is the basic life cycle of maven they will ask you at a time of interview that it will initialize and it will compile it will define the scope and then it will run it and then it will end the program or something like that and all these 
things are happening through some plugins. Okay, so some plugins are available. So we have different plugins. We have compile compiler plugin. Okay, we have Surefire plugin. Okay, so I'll tell you what is the purpose of compiler plugin and Surefire plugin and and these things so these are the plugins are also available right so we have dependency section we have uh, uh, this is called uh, com uh, plugin section in your form.xml file and everything associated with your project and make sure that okay you are connected to the internet to download all these jar files with you right so let's create one maven project and I already told you how to create Maven project. Just go to new, click on project, and uh, select Maven project. Click on next. Click on next. So here I'm giving, let's see, my first Maven demo. And artifact ID, you can give any artifact ID. Let's say I'm giving the same name. Click on finish. So you will see that my first Maven demo, one Maven project, the folder structure of Maven project it will be like this. This is a project having SRC main Java, having SRC test Java, JRE system library got added at this dedicate, and Maven dependencies currently, it depends what kind of uh, dependencies we have in our pom.xml file. So it will add pom.xml file directly and then by default it is having this JUnit library. Yes. Just a minute, actually, I ordered something just a minute. Yeah, sorry, guys, actually, I, I ordered something. Anyway, so <clears throat> I can see that yes, JUnit library is already available, and you can see JUnit library got added automatically. Okay, by default. Now, if I'm going to add some other libraries, so how to add that? So let's say I want to add Selenium library now. So I'll go to seleniumhq.org. I'll simply write Selenium Maven. And you will see that 3.13 is available. I think it's recently, two days back only. So let's say I'm going to add. Just press Control Shift F for formatting. So sometimes what happens is that okay, it's giving this error that uh, artifact is missing. Missing artifact 3.13 is missing. Maybe it's not able to connect and not able to download it properly. Or some some error is there because but you can see that 3.13 is available. Such kind of errors are coming when 3.14 you are using and let's see 3.14 itself not available over here. Okay, sorry, it's not 2.13, it's 3.13 actually. So 3.13 is available, but you are using actually 3.14. It's still not available. So such kind of errors are coming sometimes like this, but now we are getting this error that 3.13 is also not available. That's a missing artifact. Right? So what to do? I'll simple get the properties. I'll get the location and I'll go to that location in my command prompt. In my terminal okay and I'll go to that directory like this and then simple I'll use maven clean install maven clean install I'll run this command and let's see what happens so it is, you can see it is actually downloading Selenium Java 3.13. Can you see that? It's downloading all the artifacts, Selenium 3.13. So sometimes from Eclipse, it doesn't work. So you have to go to your command prompt and then you can do it. So it's actually downloading all the jar files and uh, okay, so build is successful. You can see build is success. The moment you get this message, build is successful. And then I'll just you can see I'll just refresh this project and uh, still error is there and I'll do one thing 
you can see that okay all the selenium jar files are available over here but i'll do one thing just right click on it and then go to maven and update project and click on ok so you will see that all the dependencies got added over here all the selenium dependencies automatically got added and this error is also gone so you have to build it like this maven clean install so if you try to build it once again because it already downloaded all the jar files into n2 now it's not going to download it will directly pick it from n2 folder so now it's not downloading because we have already downloaded it right so now let's say you change the version to 3.12 you say that okay no i don't want to work with 3.13 i want to uh, move back to 3.12 again you have to build it maven clean install now so 3.12 let's say it's already added in my m2 so it's not going to download but it will be replaced over here now it is 3.12 now let's say you are writing 3.14 which is actually not available and then if you try to maven clean install on which giving error because missing artifact and here also it's saying build failure the project okay 3.14 it's trying to access through I was cached in the local repository resolution will be attempted until the update interval or the send something something it's written but uh, the build is failure because this is missing 3.140 is missing no dependency information available it's saying it's not available obviously so it will not be able to download and then it's gone so again let's say i'm coming back to 3.13 and then again maven clean install so whenever you are changing the version do always maven clean install if it is available inside the n2 repository n2 like folder it will take it from there if it is needed to download the new one it will download the new one now again back to 3.13 fine let's add some other dependencies so let's say we're doing now wait yeah go ahead uh yeah, like uh, you went to the command prompt, the location. Could you uh, show that again? How did you go? I mean, which? How did you take that location? Okay. So to take that location, this project we have to reach gotcha. this level. Right click, uh -huh. go to properties, the source, and this is the location of this project. That's a pro that is the project location, right? Is that the same thing? Yeah, that's the same thing. Yes. It's the pro yeah. Okay. This Maven itself is a Maven. Uh, this project itself a maven project so we have project, to okay so that. then go to that and then when we um, when we give it the command maven clean install so it's doing based on the pom.xml whatever dependencies we have given yes it is reading this pom.xml file actually internally okay okay thanks okay uh, Naveen. yeah go ahead uh, Navin, so to run the Maven command from the command line, so we need to install Maven separately, right? Hmm. And set the path variable m to home and all. Yes. So, using Maven, guys, download Maven. It's available in the form of a zip file. You need to download and some uh, variable, environment variable path you have to set. It's very easy. And to underscore home, you have to add. And then you have to restart your laptop to set the environment variable properly. You can check the steps on Google. Okay, because in uh, Mac there is a separate configuration. In Windows, uh, I like I'm not using any Windows machine, so I cannot show you. But it's very very simple. Okay, so just do it, and then only these these commands will work. Maven clean install and everything will work. I mean, one more question. Uh, we don't have dependen dependencies for drivers, right? Chrome driver, iDriver. Mm -hmm. You can add to dependencies. Or we see everything in the market. Everything is available in the form of dependencies most of the time. Like HTML unit driver, we have the dependency, right? So let's add HTML unit driver. You want to use HTML unit driver? So I'll add the dependency for that. So.
So let's say 2.52 is the latest version. So we should always use pick the latest version. Copy this and go to your form dot and uh, HTML in a driver 2.52 is available over here. And uh, simple and do one thing name and clean install. You see that yes, build is successful. Okay, build success, and we will see HTML in a driver should be added over here. You can see HTML unit 2.12. Maybe this jar file, they haven't changed the name, but HTML unit driver got added over here. See HTML unit core also got added. So some HTML unit okay, got added over here. Right? Now let's add uh, <coughs> uh, this thing also. Uh, test ng also. Let's, let's see. Test ng maven. So for test ng maven is 6.13. Let's copy this. For our automation purpose, guys, we have to use compile. Instead of the scope is compile. Otherwise, you can remove the scope. And then simple by maven clean install. Okay, I think it's compiling and then it's Build is successful. We will see that test ng. You can see it's over here 6.1.4.3 is available. So test ng is also here, right? And then just format how to do the formatting over here. Just press Ctrl Shift F. Okay, so test ng is also here. <coughs> Let's see, I want to move it to test ng 6. Point, uh, what is the version? Let's see, previous version. 6.1 point or 6.11 let's see let's do that for experiment maven clean install again build is successful everything is green Build is successful, and we will see in our Eclipse 6.11 is available now. Right? So you can change it like this. Similarly, you can add for Apache Pi API or Log 4J for others, you can do that. Uh, I'll remove this JUnit library, I don't need that. So JUnit is gone. <coughs> Now, what I'll do that I'll delete this package, delete this dummy package, and I'll create a test case quickly. Let's see my quickly. I'll create a couple of class with some dummy methods, dummy test methods. Test class one. The rate test public void. Let's see a one method. And this test chain is coming from test chain library. A one a two. A3, A4, A1, A2, A3, and A4, and let's say I'm printing only the class name over here. Four methods are available, right? Cool. Now I'll see. Uh, let's run it from command prompt. Let's clear the console first using clear method, and then. Maven clean install. Right? So if you see, first it was compiling. 
it was checking the latest scanning the project it was checking that okay any plugins are available or something like this anything we have to download nothing to download it's already available inside the n2 folder so it will pick it from there and then in the end it will execute your test cases how many test cases were there it is trying to execute your test case and trying to four test cases were there printing test class one 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 four times four test cases zero failure so it's actually executing your test cases as well <clears throat> getting a point it's actually executing your test cases as well right now let's see you create one more test class test class number two click on finish and having four different methods and test class number two right and then again i'll execute it from command line we will reinstall see now eight test cases got executed zero failed right and let's say deliberately uh, uh, i'll make one test case fail let's see let's see false right uh, so a true is should expect true but I'm passing false, so this A4 will be failed inside this test case 2, class 2, the dot Java. Let's run it again. <coughs> so all the compilation is done. It's running your test case and saying out of 8, one test case got failed. Failure 1, expected true 1, but found false. Right? Okay which is this is also fine and create one class over here inside src main java now this class 3 and uh, i'm giving let's see two methods over here okay let's run it again But 8 plus 2, ideally it should execute 10 test cases, right? 4 plus 4 plus 2. But it's not picking test player class number 3 dot Java. Why? Because Maven, that's why this is the significance of SRC main Java and SRC test Java. Maven will check only inside SRC test Java. So in Maven, there is a rule. All the test cases should be written inside this source folder, SRC test Java. If you are writing any test case inside SRC main Java, it will never be picked by Maven. Okay, Master, got it? <coughs> Kevin, uh, how to install that Surefire plugin and compile it plugin? I'm coming on that point. I'm coming on that point. Okay. okay. So, guys, what about others? Deepthi? Mm -hmm. Uh, Naveen, that means in SRC test Java, all test ng test cases should be written there, and uh, all the uh, Java code with uh, public static void main should be written under SRC main slash Java. Uh, see, now you have to change the language. So the first line is correct. All the test cases, test ng, j unit, whatever the test cases you are writing, it should be written inside SRC test Java. Those files, those Java classes should be written over here. But other utility methods or uh, XLS reader or your page object model, like all those page classes, all the other classes except from test classes, it should be written in under SRC main Java. SRC main Java should not have, should not contain any, any test class or any test cases. Why? Because it will not pick, Maven will not pick those, those test methods. Got it? So, always yeah. remember there is a rule. Yes. 
ऐसा ऐसी टेस्ट जाब आप इंटर टेस्ट केसेस द मोमेंट यू जॉइन एनी न्यू प्रोजेक्ट इफ दे आर यूजिंग मेवन प्रोजेक्ट इमीजिएटली गो देयर एंड देन चेक अंडर ऐसा ऐसी टेस्ट जाब आप योर टेस्ट क्लासेस विल बी देयर एंड दिस गो देयर एंड देन सी दैट इफ यू नो दीज थिंग देन ओनली यू विल गेट टू नो राइट अदरवाइज हाउ विल यू गेट टू नो इट्स नथिंग रिटर्न अवे बट इट कम्स विद योर एक्सपीरियंस एट ओके गेस यू गो टू एस आर सी टेस्ट जाब आप एंड देन सी इट अवेट If they are writing some test cases in fact SRC main Java, immediately you can tell them no, this is not the right way of writing the code. Only utilities, functions, libraries should be created under SRC main Java. That is your main code. Test code should be written inside SRC test Java. Cool. Now, let <clears> me <throat> one question. So, so the base class we create like in the framework, so that is created in main or a test? Inside the main. Okay. In in base class, we are not writing any test cases over there, right? Okay. Now, what I was explaining, yeah, some plugins. So, how to add those plugin inside your Pomgrid XML file? So, this is a dependency section. This is the so. If you see, you read this particular Pomgrid XML file. This is the project. XML name schema. NS means namespace. So this is a namespace according to Maven Apache dot org. This organization having this is a standard organization using 4.0.0 Maven. This is a XML namespace according to the W3 standard W3 org. This is a schema they have given, and a schema location is available somewhere on the repository. And uh, this is a Apache schema for uh, <clears throat> okay, these two uh, schema location they have given, and the model version is 4.0.0 of your. Project. Make sure that okay, you don't delete these lines. That's why you are able to connect to those Maven centralized repositories just because of these things. And then you have your group ID, your artifact ID, and version number. And tomorrow I'll create this jar file and I'll deploy it somewhere. Okay, <clears throat> on the Maven repository. And then I'll give it to you that okay, and then you will add these three things in your form dot XML file, right? And then you will, and then I have done the packaging in the form of jar file. That's why you are getting jar file. And you can give your own version. I can give my own version like one point zero or two point zero or whatever. And I can create okay my first Maven demo on Naveen XLS Reader or artifact ID is this org dot Naveen dot XLS Reader and one point zero. Don't you think it it looks like this? Group ID, artifact ID, version. For Selenium also, group ID, artifact ID, and version. So Selenium developers, they are doing the same thing. They are writing the code. They they have merged it together in the form of jar file, and that's why they are given to you. They have given to you, and 3.1.3 is available in the market, and they release the version to you guys. Same thing you can do it for your project as well. Right. I mean, uh, this group ID and artifact ID. Do we use any um, particular naming conventions? Because I see that many of people using com dot. Yes, yes, yes. And their name yes, and. Yes, yes. yes. So let's see. And let's see. You are working with Amazon. So obviously, you have to give the uh, group ID. You want to obviously showcase your company name. Or let's see. If I'm using Naveen Automation Labs, so I can use Naveen Automation Labs dot Selenium dot Excel Reader. Something like this, and give your artifact ID. Something like this. So you can give any name; it doesn't matter. But naming convention you should follow like this. So there are a lot of people. Google is giving a lot of libraries. Apache is a company; they are giving a lot of libraries. Apache Poi is there, and uh, Apache Tomcat servers are available. There are so many uh, libraries provided by Apache. Intuit is a company in Bangalore. They have given one Karate framework. Product, I mean, product. Let's go. It's a part of JavaScript. But Amazon, they are building something. Walmart, they are building something. And so all the open source communities, they are giving some group ID, artifact ID, according to their name. TestNG is open source. So TestNG, they are writing like this. Org. Not TestNG. Why Org? This is an open source organization. So that's why they are using Org. Tomorrow. I'll be using like this org dot Naveen Automation Labs dot 
or XLS reader or something like this. So you can use like this. So you can, the point is what exactly I'm trying to say guys, nobody will tell you such things. You can create your group ID, artifact ID, version ID, and then convert into jar file and then give it to somebody. And then they will be using this particular uh, uh, group ID, artifact ID and versioning, and they will automatically XLS reader will be circulated to the entire world. Right? So what exactly I'm doing in my project currently? I have created my own framework and I have converted everything into jar file and I have given to these guys. What is the advantage of this thing? No one can see my code at what exactly I have written. So no one can steal it. No one can see what exactly kind of framework I have designed. You just need to use my libraries, you use my, can I see testng.jar file source code? No. Explicitly, you have to check the source code and check the download the source code and everything because there is a rule in open source that if this is open source, the code should be uh, should be given. But I'm giving the jar files. I don't know what exactly they have written inside these jar files. If you see all the Maven dependency jar files, there are so many. I don't know what is written in Selenium Chrome driver or jar or Edge dot jar or Firefox or number of jar files support dot jar file. They have written. They have, so they have let's say thousand. Java classes they have combined into 10 to 20 Java files and they have given to us. We are not bothered about it okay, what exactly they have written. We are just using the method. Okay, like this. But how will you get to know what are different classes methods? Then you have to release a Java doc. A Java documentation you have to release. That's another rule. Right? What is the rule? If 6.1.3 is there, it's your responsibility that you have to provide proper explanation what exactly you are going to uh, you know you are going to give in 6.1.3 selenium responsibility is that what exactly you are giving in this version 3.1.3 version see if you are see they have written if you are using maven you will find all the selenium maven artifacts directly in the central centralized maven repository over here right so you have to download like this and for selenium firefox driver separate dependency html driver separate dependency selenium server there is a separate dependency like this for phantom js they have separate dependencies like this so what i'm trying to say if 3.1.3 is available or selenium artifact is available or jar files are available it's selenium responsibility otherwise how will i get to know I don't have time. What do you want me to do? You want me to go to your jar code, I mean jar files, check each and every Java code, and then what exactly kind of method and the classes or interfaces or the logic you have written? No. If I'm providing XLS reader or Java, it's my responsibility to give you all the methods, the explanation properly, the proper documentation, it's my responsibility. So that's why this documentation comes into the picture. Here you will see the complete Java doc. Right? What do you mean by each and everything, right? Complete Java doc is available over here. Right? Or Java doc is available in the form of, I mean, this is a documentation. Sorry, this is called Java doc. If you see complete information about classes and the packages, as I told you what web driver is an interface. So we will go to W and you will see the web driver is an interface or not. See, this is web driver, just click on it. Web driver is an interface. It's written in their documentation. And someone, I mean, I mean, a few days back, someone was challenging me that, okay, no web driver is a class, that nonsense guy. He was like unnecessarily arguing with me that no Naveen web driver is a class. And I was actually laughing that why, how can you say that web driver is a class? And he was giving his own different concept and he, this guy is around 15 years of experience guy in the industry, in automation. And I was so surprised. And then I told him, do you know what is, what is the purpose of Java documentation? He doesn't know what is Java doc. And then I explained him like this. See, this is a web driver interface and this is the documentation published by Selenium HQ.org available on their GitHub repository. And this is, it's clearly written, web driver is an interface. Forget about this documentation. Can you create the object of interface? He said, no. And then why are you saying a web driver is an interface? 
and then he was actually writing web driver driver equal to new web driver and then eclipse was getting at it then he got to know okay and then he said sorry to me i mean i don't want that he should say sorry but this is a lot of lot of people they are they are not aware about all these things guys and nobody will tell you you have to do such experiments and with the experience it will come so the driver has an interface and all the methods it's their responsibility they have given the proper documentation it's written over there what is the purpose of get method load a new web page in the current browser window what is a get current url what is get title get title we are passing it it returns the title of the current page so complete documentation is available over here and the driver is an interface so chrome driver is a implemented class so you can see chrome driver is implementing what all implemented interface chrome chrome driver is implementing all these interfaces so multiple inter uh, inheritance is allowed in java this chrome driver is inheriting multiple in interfaces and it's implementing the driver also right so please always read these java doc whenever a new thing is available in the market test ng java doc <coughs> j unit java doc apache poi api java doc okay got it or it's too much or uh, i'm explaining like too much got it explaining like too much <clears throat> okay so this is java documentation guys is uh, given and uh, dependency is also available over here now let's talk about plugins so we will see that uh, dependency section is starting from here and ending over here okay this is the dependencies tag starting and ending over here <coughs> so this is a starting how will you get to know simple dependencies tag i have written and slash dependence slash dependencies means it's getting ended over here now we will add some plugins so plugins guys no need to remember the syntax you just need to add the plugin how to add <coughs> nobody will ask you the plugin information the plugin syntax and all that. that's a stupid question nobody will ask you okay so let me give you the plugin um I have some plugins. Let me show you. Okay, so plugins will be available inside this plugins, and then we have multiple plugins. Plugin number one, plugin number two, and then plugin number three. Okay, so we will take and one more compiler plugin. So we will take from here to here. Plugins to plugins, we will take. Copy and then go to this form.xml file and after properties, just add it over here. And remove these spaces. We have to add this build tag also. Build and uh, build should be ended like this before dependency zero. You can forget about this resource and all such things. And uh, so let's have a quick look. We will compile it again, don't worry. Exactly, it's a uh, 
so dependencies make sure dependencies okay and uh, okay so we will we will do one thing this builder actually we have to be very careful like after plugging okay build is dependencies are not part of build actually the dependency is a separate section and build all the plugins are coming under build section so this is the build component actually three things are there uh, we have plugin three plugins are available inside the build dependencies are not part of the build part so fine and now what i have to do that uh, simple you can see the first plugin is compiler plugin and what is a configuration 1.6 1.6 the version i have given so compiler plugin is used to compile the code Surefire plugin is used to execute your test cases if any test cases are available and you have one configuration tag is there if you really want to configure that okay so testng.xml file if you want to execute <coughs> okay so just create one testng.xml file and then it will be created over here that we will give the testng.xml file now and then source plugin that it will create your jar file it will build it actually in the form of jar file it will convert the source in the form of jar the goal is jar sometimes developers they give war file war file that is web archival file so we don't need any work web archival file because we are not going to deploy on tomcat or something so a simple jar file we have to do so these are the three plugins and then i'll go to my command prompt and then simple i'll write name and clean install so whenever you are making changes in form detection file make sure that okay you are so fine perfectly fine and uh, okay that's fine that is a test case failure that's okay so uh, let me do one thing now we will add this testng.xml file in which so in which we will add these two classes test case number one and two and we will execute from maven directly okay so what exactly we will do we will pick this src main resources we will create okay let me create src main resources the source folder and then Change.xml file and pick and then paste it over here. And then I'll make some changes so I don't want any listener. And my name will be let's see my demo test automation suite. So my name will be my demo test. Move these to this package. So we will be giving this, we will uncomment it. All these spaces are necessary. So that is a test name test name equal to my demo test and where exactly your classes are available so i'll do one thing i'll create a package proper package let's see my package is form dot test package and inside these these classes i'm moving over here form dot test test class number one and test class number two Okay, and uh, mm -hmm. XML. Now I'll give the package name. What is my package name? Form dot test dot test class number one. Don't write Java. And uh, same thing for test class number two. Okay. Then I'll add this testng.xml file which is available. 
don't give the exact path guys that c drive or U, uh, d drive or something like this we it, will start, it should start from src and uh, available over here src main resources src main resources testng.xml src main resources testng.xml we have to give the source folder path that's it and then save it and then now we will do one thing that uh, let's run this maven clean install and let's see okay so you can see that uh, one got failed total eight test cases are there right and then one test case got failed so actually it is picking now testng.xml so let me we'll do one thing let's see i'll comment this slide and then run it let's see it is actually picking or not maven clean install now it's picking because i have commented test case number two class number two it's actually picking only test class number one so you can execute like this and it found that some new dependency or maybe some plugin is available You're actually downloading and then executing your build and total test cases four okay and let's say i'll move this test class number three also from here to here and uh, we will uncomment and we will add the test class number three else also over here number three and let's clear and run it again maven clean install total 10 test cases are there and one failure because obviously assert 2 is getting failed now it picked test case number three also class number three also picked right so there's no need to do build again and again right every time we are doing may one clean install may one clean install so let's see everything build is perfectly fine everything is up to date all the dependencies we have downloaded properly we can do one thing simple now you just want to execute your test cases without building the project again and again why are you wasting your time a simple write maven test just execute your test case directly hit the test cases by using maven test so it's directly hitting the maven test it's not doing any downloading stuff or nothing simple it will hit your test cases right so a surefire plugin is there where you have to give your <clears throat> this thing testgd.xml file it's a very 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 important interview question show up a plugin testgd.xml in this configuration suite xml files you have to give and then you can do that if we have multiple dot xml regression sanity you can give all the file path over here okay like it will pick one by one like this cool and we will do the same integration with jenkins because jenkins will read this maven to format xml file and then Jenkins will come over here and then it will try to execute your testgd.xml file from there and then it will generate the report and it will execute the program. Right? One more thing is there. You want to clean install but you don't want to execute. Let's say you have 100 test cases because if you write maven clean install, right? Maven, you want to uh, download a couple of things, you have added a couple of things but I don't want my test cases to be executed i just want to uh, build my project because let's say you have tomorrow thousand test cases right now we have only 10 test cases and we have not written any selenium logic over there so that's why quickly within two three seconds it's getting executed but tomorrow let's say you have thousand test cases and if you do this maven clear install unnecessary it will pick all the test cases inside src test java it will try to execute and it will take it will take a lot of time it will take ages to execute the complete build so there is one more option maven clean install minus d skip test is equal to true it means please skip the test cases minus d skip test is equal to true see now it did not pick any test case no test cases it did not pick any test case 
So minus d skip is equal to test is equal to true. A quick build will be happened and then without executing your test cases. This is what developers they do. They are also writing their unit level test cases. So whenever they have to, whenever they have to uh, uh, do the build, they have written let's say 100, 200 test cases. They want to uh, do the build quickly and they wanted to give it to you. So immediately will be given to you. Okay, with this minus d skip test equal to true. You can do that. It means please skip the test cases equal to true means please skip all the test cases and just build it quickly and generate the jar file. Okay, and where exactly is generating the jar file? See this on this folder. This is my project name, my first dipo 0.01 snapshot source dot jar. This is the jar file. Got created and it moved to over here. User Naveen, I told you right, dot m2. One folder is their repository and then jar files will be added over here. You can see snapshot dot jar file. And developers, although they are doing the same thing, they will give you this folder, I mean, I mean this path, location path. And you need to download this war file or jar file and then you have to deploy it on Tomcat. This is what DevOps guys are doing. DevOps guys are taking this jar file or war file and they are deploying on Tomcat through Maven or through some Jenkins or Jenkins pipeline and all those things. Okay, 